Hi guys, it's Megan from the blog wilsonhomestead.com and today I am going to be doing our one month baby and mommy postpartum update. I cannot believe it's already been a month. That seems to just totally fly by so fast and he is already getting so big. It's just, just so crazy. So I'm going to do his update first and then I will do my postpartum update for you guys after that. So hopefully you enjoyed this and let's get right into it. He weighs about 10 pounds now. He is really filling out and getting lots of fat rolls and it's really, really cute. I can definitely see that his face and his arms and his legs have really filled out since he was born. He was a bit smaller than my daughter when he was born and so I remember just being surprised at how like skinny his arms and legs were but now they are quite fat. He's got several rolls on each arm and leg so that always makes me happy to see. We have been working on him practicing taking naps in his bassinet for naps and nighttime even though a lot of times he does still end up sleeping on me during the day and he comes into our bed at night a lot. You can see he's sleeping on me right now. The best he's done at night was the other night when he slept in his bassinet for six hours and then he came to bed with us and nursed and he slept for the rest of the night. And that was amazing. He's never slept that long of a stretch before. I didn't get the best sleep because he still is a really, really loud sleeper and his bassinet is right next to our bed, but it was still amazing and I'm so proud of him. So it's been really nice that his sleep is kind of lengthening at night and he's starting to get into a little bit more of a routine. That's always such a relief when they start doing that. But on a regular night, he'll usually sleep in his bassinet for about three hours and then come to bed with us and nurse about two times over the rest of the night. So that's still pretty good for only being a month old and I haven't done any sleep training with him. We've just been practicing, laying down in the bassinet and if he cries, I just pick him up. It's not a big deal at all. So I feel like he's still doing pretty good for not really working on it for very long. I really love having him snuggle us with us in bed and it just, makes me so happy to see him laying there and to be able to, to feel him breathing when I want to and just snuggle with him all night and I, I love it so much. But it is easier, I find, when you do practice some, some with them sleeping on their own while they're this young because as they get older, if you've done some practicing, it just makes it easier and so that's what we're doing. That's what I do with my daughter and she was sleeping through the night in her own crib by around nine months. So this method seems to work pretty well for us and I'm being a lot more chill this time but we're doing the same general thing and doing some of each with bassinet and sleeping with us and co-sleeping is working just fine for us right now. Naps, he takes some in the bassinet and some on me in the wrap or if I'm able to just sit down and snuggle him, we'll do that. It just depends on what I have going on and how fuss fussy he is. I've been trying to practice laying him down awake but drowsy, which is easier said than done. He was so good at that for the first several weeks and then he all of a sudden stopped and he would not have it at all. And then now we're like slowly getting back into it where every now and then he will let me do it and he does really well and he just will put himself to sleep and it's amazing but most of the time he still doesn't and that's fine. We're practicing, even if for most of the times it doesn't work out, it's still, it's still good practice. He is exclusively cloth diapered now. We use disposables for the first week or so and then we've been switching over to cloth diapers and I had to get a little bit more to have a big enough stash to exclusively cloth diaper him. I'm working on a newborn cloth diaper stash video for you guys and that will be up on my channel very soon. But I love cloth diapering and they seem to leak a lot less than our disposables did so I've been really happy with how that's been working out. He does so good in his car seat. We've only gone out about five times and since we are kind of in quarantine because of this virus going around we haven't gone out lately hardly at all but when he does run his car seat he does so good he falls asleep instantly I don't know why I don't try to put him in it for naps more often because he does so good at it in the car for the first few weeks we had a big problem with him projectile vomiting and he would do it every day almost every 24 hours he would projectile vomit like once or twice and I did several things and I'm not sure which thing helped or if it was just something he had to kind of grow out of on his own a little bit, but I went off of dairy. I cut all dairy out of my diet as well as like spices that might annoy him like curry and I went off of like peanuts and some just different allergen foods. I got him started on a good infant probiotic that I will link below for you guys. I would just, I pump out of the haka anyway, so I would just use a little bit of the rest milk and put some of the powder probiotic in it and then use a syringe to feed it to him, which I would have probably started doing anyway just because it's really good to get some good probiotics in there and get some good gut health going but I had heard that that would help with projectile vomiting anyway and then I also got him adjusted at the chiropractor so those three things maybe it was a combination of them 
or one of them or none of them, I have no idea, but now he ha hardly ever goes up. He can go like five or more days and he'll have a little, it's a lot smaller than it used to be. And so I'm really happy that we got that fixed because we were going through so many changes of clothes and it would scare him so bad. I felt so terrible. A lot of times he would suck it up his nose and he would just freak out and I, oh, I just felt so bad. So I'm really glad that we have that fixed. When he does spit up now, it's usually because I let him eat too much or because I didn't burp him soon enough. So there's like good reasons that he's not, he's still spitting up occasionally. Earlier this week, there were several days where he was just so grumpy. Unless he was sleeping or eating, he would just cry and I didn't know, I don't know what was wrong with him. He didn't seem to be in pain. He wasn't like pulling his knees up, like his stomach hurt or anything. So I guess babies just get grumpy sometimes. They just have off days because he's better now and I didn't really think there was anything wrong with him at that point. But we, we got him adjusted at the chiropractor and he seems a bit better now. So maybe he was a little bit uncomfortable from his back being out. Anyway, that is pretty much everything for Demetrius. And here he is, still sleeping in the wrap. So now let's move on to my postpartum update. I haven't gotten too terribly sleep deprived this time around because Luke is super sweet and he takes Demetrius out of her room around 6.30 and lets me get some sleep. In the, on the weekdays where he has to go to work, it's not as long, but on the weekends I can sleep several hours, which is amazing to get some un uninterrupted sleep where I don't have to worry about the baby in her bed at all and protecting him from Luke or anything. So between having broken sleep all night and a couple of solid hours of sleep in the morning, I'm feeling pretty good. Not as sleep deprived as last time. I definitely have a bit more energy, so that's really, really good. I've been back to cooking and cleaning quite a bit and making videos. Luke has gone back to work now, so I've been watching both of the kids by myself during the day, which has, is quite the adventure. And normally, it seems like they both desperately need something at the same time, but for most of the day, Sophia is pretty good at entertaining herself and not needing to be helped. So I can put him in this wrap and get a lot of things done if I have the energy. So it's working out pretty well and it's not as hard as I thought it would be before he was born. I remember being pretty worried about how I would manage two of them. I haven't gotten any baby flus this time, which I'm so thankful for. I got them so bad after Sylvia was born, and my thyroid was so out of whack then, and this time I was on the full GAPS diet for the most part while I was pregnant, especially near the end because my husband was doing the intro diet and I was just on the full diet. I was eating some things like quinoa and rice to keep my carb intake up because I was pregnant. but. My thyroid did not go way out of whack once I had him like last time. Last time, it spiked and we thought I would have to stop breastfeeding, it was this huge fiasco. And this time, it stayed pretty level. And I think it's because of the GAPS diet. So because of that, and I also took my placenta, which has a lot of amazing hormones that you're just putting back into your body. And then also this time I just more know what I'm doing so I'm not like constantly freaking out about every sound he makes and everything that comes up. So I'm so happy that I haven't gotten the baby blues because that was really horrible. My bleeding is pretty much gone. I still wear a cloth pad just because it's not completely gone and I do have some discharge sometimes. And if I overdo it, the bleeding will start again. So I gotta kind of watch it. I was actually at this point a couple weeks ago and then we went on a walk and then when we got back that night, I passed some big blood clots, which was really scary, and I texted my midwife, and she said it was nothing to worry about, and then after that I started bleeding again, so now it's taken me a couple more weeks to get it back down to almost gone. So needless to say, I haven't gone on another walk again. I think my body just needs a bit more time to take it easy. My milk seems to be finally regulated. It came in the second day. It came in really fast. Last time it seemed like it took several days, and then this time it came in a couple days earlier. I am so happy to be breastfeeding again. I missed it so much, and it's just so fun, and such a wonderful bonding experience with your baby, and I hope I can breastfeed a lot longer with this one. For the first little while with him, I had a bit of an oversupply, and now it's a bit regulated, so it doesn't like drown him when he nurses. He was having a hard time with wanting to latch because he knew it would let down really fast and then he would choke and it was it was kind of hard to feed him for a little while and he got a, a little bit bad at latching. I actually had a little bit of an issue with some cracked and bleeding nipples because he, he had stopped latching properly. He started out good, He's, it, I got oversupply and he got scared of it letting down so he stopped latching properly 
and then it took us a little bit to get my supply back down and get him latched properly again. So that was a little bit of an adventure, but we're kind of back to normal now. I don't have too much milk. I used the Hakka a lot at the beginning. I would use it with most of the daytime feeds, and then now I've gone to using it just once on both sides in the morning. So just whenever I get up for He's one side nurser because I have plenty of milk. I don't have to worry about nursing on both sides to keep my supply up. But in the morning, he'll nurse on one side and I'll pump with the haka on the other. And then next time you see, he'll nurse on this side and I'll use the haka on this side. I think we'll keep doing that for the foreseeable future. I have about 15 pints of breast milk saved up, which I think is a pretty decent stash. I'll probably stop about now and I'll start saving whatever I pump during the day to have my daughter drink in her bedtime bottle, which would be really awesome if she could start having breast milk again. That's going to be really great for her. All right, I'm going to show you guys my postpartum stomach because I feel like it's important to kind of normalize what the postpartum body looks like and realize that it's totally normal to still look like you're a few months pregnant for a while and that we shouldn't be so concerned about bouncing back. We should give our bodies grace and be proud of the stretch marks and all the things that happen when you're pregnant because you grew a human and that's pretty amazing. So I feel like it should be more normalized and so I'm going to show you guys how my stomach is looking a month postpartum. It still looks like I'm a few months pregnant and I am totally okay with that. It's still quite jiggly and that's fine with me. I'm still wearing maternity clothes because I don't fit into my regular clothes like that. So you can see it's really jiggly still. So yeah, that is pretty much it for my postpartum update. Hopefully you guys enjoyed both of these updates. I'm just so happy that both of us are doing well. It's such a blessing and I'm just having so much fun with my little newborn and I really missed having such a tiny little baby and it's already going by way too fast. It needs to slow down a little bit. But anyway, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!